Pleasant greetings, my brothers and sisters. Today we want to delve into the Word of God. And we go to Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Powerful, profound words. Okay? Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, this very word, this very word, is the reason for our, exi our, our existence. It is the reason that our existence continues. Okay? So, we just want to give God thanks for this very word. However, this word goes just beyond the mind's capacity. This word is so profound. And it is um it is personified in Christ, who is himself the word. Okay? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So Jesus Christ is the word of God, and he is God. Now we're gonna go um into a little synopsis that I that I wrote, you know, with regards to the word. You know, I know Christ mentioned how the word is sown, okay? Whether it is, whether it fell on, um, by the way, whether it fell by the wayside, where the enemy comes and steals it, and um, whether it fell among um, stony ground, okay, where there's no root gathered, okay? Whether by temptation or whatever it is, um, you know, it, it no longer um, it takes precedence. And um, whether it fell among thorns. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the cares of the world, you know, the little problems. And you, 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 you want to have, you know, the riches or the pleasures. You want to have it all, you know. Those things come and, uh, and destroy the, the whole meaning of the word. And corrupt the word that is within you. Okay. And uh, are you going to be that fertile ground. The surrendered vessel. Okay. That allows God to. Nourish you. Grow you. And actually produce good fruit. Through you. Through that very word. So. Here we go. Like I said, the word of God takes charge over any circumstances in our lives. However, we have to be in faith in order to become the fertile ground that inhibits, inhabits the word seed sown by the sower, Jesus Christ. There are going to be trials that comes to test the rooted and grounded seed of the word in us. There are going to be circumstances and situations that arise to question the credibility of the word of God in us. Yet we have to be surrendered soil that allows the nutrients of the spirit of God to nourish and flourish the roots of the sown word so God can influence it to be watered and increase by his spirit and the infallible truth of his authority. What do I mean by this? Just like I said earlier, we have to allow God's word to transform us. We have to allow God's word. How do we do this? We do this by prayer, studying the word, by faith, by believing, by believing what this word is. Because this world is going to show you otherwise. This world is going to come up against you with otherwise. To prove that this, to try and prove that this word is not what it says it is. Do not believe the liar, man. Do not be misled by the wiles and schemes of the enemy. The world's wavering ideologies and behaviors do not define you as the child of God. The word of God does which explains us being the sons of God. That word has to be your overcomer, as Christ has already overcome the world. Remember, as he was tested in the wilderness, 
be not only God in the flesh that dwell among us, but the very word of God that stood before the foundations of the world and was tested by the devil, so too will we be tested by the enemy. Allowing the word of God to be a response in the trials of earthly dynamics and schemes will vindicate what Christ has said on the cross. It is finished. He was resurrected in victory over death, hell, and destruction. The same way he applied the word unto the devil who had to flee from him in the wilderness, so is the same way we should apply this very word in our life circumstances. When we are persecuted, when we come across the temptations, when we come across all these happenings that comes up against the body of Christ, stand firm on the very word of God. He was, he was resurrected in victory over death, hell, and destruction. So are we who have been allowing the word and the faith of Jesus Christ to be the solid rock and foundation on which we stand. Our response, excuse me, our response to the world is not one that mirrors the world. We reflect Christ our Savior. We are in this world but not of this world. And I repeat that again. We are in this world, but not of this world. We be in the hands and feet, the hearts and mind, the body, the soul and spirit of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. We are overcomers. But how do we become overcomers? How do we walk into this truth? We allow the word of God. We cling to that very word. Therefore that very word becomes our transformation. The spirit of the Lord cements and ferments that very word into our lives, into our minds, into our hearts, into our soul, into our strengths. And by that very word, we overcome the world. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Blessings.